Welcome back to Media Hotline, a podcast about brands, media, and the business of editorial. My name is Danica Lowe, and for the last 20 years, I've been a journalist, writer, editor, and digital director at some of the biggest media companies in the United States. Now, I run a consulting business where I help brands and corporations with their media and digital strategies. This episode of Media Hotline is about opportunities brands have to engage with editorial beyond the scope of earned media. Now, I won't be talking about display advertising in this episode, and by earned media, I mean things like news stories, feature stories, profiles, and product launches. If you've been in the industry for a while, you may have noticed that it's become increasingly difficult over the past few years to place earned media. Not only are the numbers of startups and new brands exponentially increasing week after week, year after year, but the number of legacy media outlets has drastically declined. Not only are there fewer legacy media brands, but there are fewer outlets, and some brands have decreased the number of platforms they're publishing on. For example, shuttering print and only publishing on the web. For anyone who's pitching journalists and editors, you'll also have noticed that there are far fewer staffers and far fewer resources at every publication. Off the top of my head, I can think of one place that I worked 10, 12 years ago, where when I first worked there, there were 85 editors on staff. And today it has shuttered its print publication and there are only seven editors on staff, 85 to seven in 10 years. Overall, there are just far fewer opportunities and resources dedicated to telling brand and company stories in legacy media. And even though the advocacy of placements in legacy media in terms of brand reach, conversion, and brand halo is definitely up for debate, and storytelling and narrative can all be accomplished in many other ways, all of which are way more easily manageable and effective at reaching audiences and consumers, we all know that appearing in big legacy media publications can still be really important to brands, brand owners, and brand executives. So the industry has developed a slate of paid editorial products and opportunities that fall somewhere on the sliding scale between display advertising and a feature story. However, something I have noticed from working in editorial for a long time and now consulting on the branding, marketing, and comm side of the business is that marketing doesn't have a whole lot of clear visibility into what these editorial offerings are. One of the most important things to consider in the media landscape in 2023 is that editorial wants to do cool stuff. They used to be able to do cool stuff because they used to have big budgets in the 80s and 90s and even in the early 2000s. But in the 21st century, editorial teams just don't get that budget allocation. The result of this is that over the past 10 years, editorial teams have been forced to become pretty creative when it comes to sourcing funds to do cool storytelling. This has left editorial and creative teams way more open to partnerships with both brands and advertisers, but there is still a resistance to the perception of pay for play. So leaning more towards an editorial lens and further away from advertising on that sliding scale. And how a lot of legacy editorial teams have proceeded over the past 10 years is thinking outside of the box and looking for non-obvious solutions where it's a win-win for everyone involved. There are three examples in my own professional experience over the past few years where editorial worked directly with brand marketing on creative, outside-the-box ideas that resulted in really powerful content and a win-win situation for everybody. I spent a lot of the last 10 years of my career working in food media, leading digital teams at Epicurious and Food and & Wine. And when I started at Food and & Wine in 2017, this was before the big fallout in the food media industry. And at the time, there just was not any money dedicated to spotlighting anything beyond really traditional and conventional food and chefs in the United States. For a long time, I had been trying to get a series idea that I had off the ground. Actually, for years, I had been trying to get this off the ground. I had this idea that I wanted to do an entire video and article series about first generation Thanksgiving in this country. I wanted to find a way to feature immigrant chefs and families in this country as they gather around the table for Thanksgiving, the quintessential American holiday, and how they came to the table, how they were creating new food traditions, and the idea of becoming American around the dinner table. We had an amazing marketing team at Food and & Wine, and I spent a lot of time talking to them one-on-one -on -one about projects that I wanted to do in editorial that we just didn't have the budget to. And one day in a casual phone conversation between our editorial marketing team 
and the Ford Motors team, the idea of first generation Thanksgiving came up and immediately Ford pledged support and they gave us a tremendous amount of money for the video production and the content production for the series. I believe it's still online, and if it is, I will link it below. I am incredibly proud of having brought this to fruition, but I would never have been able to do this without the support of Ford as a brand partner. The second example of editorial being creative and working with a brand partner to fulfill an editorial need was when the annual Food & Wine Classic in Aspen rolled around. We didn't really have the editorial budget to bring the editorial staff we needed to Aspen in order to create content around our tentpole event. So in order to raise money to do this, I needed to find a brand partnership. I went to our amazing marketing team again and told them about this idea I had to create a digital house slash hub in Aspen for the duration of the event where we would have a video crew and we can invite chefs to film videos and live streams of recipe demos and Q&As. And our marketing team went to Pellegrino and Pellegrino sponsored the entire thing, which also enabled us to bring editorial staff to Food & Wine's signature annual event. This was the ultimate win-win situation because we would never have been able to travel an entire team to Aspen that way because Aspen is very expensive to travel to. But also this is an idea that can be activated and operationalized at so many live events creating a physical editorial hub where you can invite talent, celebrities, and partners to create content to amplify your brand messaging. The third example is leveraging editorial to test out partnerships in content for brands that are not traditional advertisers with the legacy media company. This is a little bit complicated and a little bit less of a direct line to an editorial win, but for brands that fall outside the general scope of traditional advertisers with a media company, sometimes collaborating with those brands on a high value, high revenue, non-traditional specialized custom editorial product can be a huge win. This is one of the last campaigns I worked on at Food & Wine before moving to Hong Kong in 2019. It was an outside the box collaboration between editorial and a CPG that had not traditionally advertised in the publication. For this company, we created a custom recipe and we posted a photo of this recipe on our social media. And for this editorial partnership, not only did it receive an incredibly positive response from our audience, vastly outperforming most of our other social media posts that year, but it also brought in a really fantastic amount of revenue, which is a brownie point and a gold star for the editorial team. Now, before we talk about other editorial ideas and opportunities beyond the scope of traditional earned media, I think it's important to keep in mind that the high level takeaway from those three examples isn't that someone should go set up a house at an event or that you should do a recipe with a recipe site or that if you're a car company, you need to go sponsor a video series. I think the high level takeaway is that channels of communication need to be more open, which is one of the driving factors which inspired me to start this podcast. So many sectors of our industry and so many people in this industry are working in silo. Brand executives, marketers, comms people, publicists, editors, publishers, salespeople, editorial marketers. No one really knows what anyone else is doing and there aren't enough cross-functional relationships. If we can open up the communication in between the different sectors of our industry, we can all move forward and collaborate together. So the main takeaway from those three examples could be that by opening channels of communication and by understanding the job functions of different sectors of our industry, we can easily find areas of alignment between branding, marketing and editorial needs, and we can all work together in a very solutions oriented way where everybody wins. If you are looking for ways to work with editorial outside the scope of traditional earned media, here are eight editorial ideas and opportunities. Very broadly speaking, I will talk through these very briefly. The first is accolades. This is an overlooked and underutilized opportunity to engage with your favorite editorial brand. Oftentimes, media companies run accolades programs as revenue streams. A lot of companies will charge for entries and applications, charge to attend the awards through ticketing, and charge you to license the award or seal for usage on your own website and in physical stores. And while it may seem strange to have to pay to be considered for an editorial award, those fees are usually way less than what it costs to buy an ad in a magazine or on a website. And as an added bonus, 
brands that win accolades from publications are often called on, quoted, and referred to throughout the following year or for years to come in the publication. Just the act of winning an editorial award that you paid an entry fee to apply to could be the first step to a long and beautiful and fruitful relationship with a legacy media company. Another opportunity to engage with legacy editorial beyond traditional earned media is through e-commerce. If you are a CPG brand or if you offer a service or a product, working with a media company as an affiliate where they get a percentage of all referred sales can help you establish a relationship with that media company. Also, it increases your chance of being covered and mentioned if you're seen as a revenue partner. Another way to engage with Legacy Editorial, and this definitely falls more on the paid side, is custom content, which is paying a fee for the branded content team that usually sits just outside the editorial team to create an article or a video for your brand, or in some cases, publications accept pre-created custom content that they will run on their site. Paying for the creation of custom content is probably the closest we can get in quote-unquote editorial to display advertising and can span anything from just a mention of a product all the way up to 100% client control of what is said in the article. So that all depends on which publication you're dealing with. The fourth bucket of opportunities that brands have to engage with editorial beyond traditional earned media is through social media sponsorships. Now, this ranges all over the map. I'll try to run through a few right here. There's Instagram, where brands can have paid partnerships, including still image, image galleries, videos, or Instagram stories. There's Facebook, where brands can pay for partnerships, including text of variable length, video, and images. There's Twitter, or X as it's known as now, which is probably more useful for specific industries and issues such as tech, social justice, and entertainment, where people are using it as a second screen while they're watching television or watching streaming. Those are just three common brand partnership platform examples. Of course, there's also Snap and TikTok. And in all of these examples where it's not live streamed, brands have the options to produce the text, image, and video in-house at the brand headquarters, or they can package production fees and content creation to the editorial or brand editorial teams. Speaking of live streams, which can be done on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, pretty much any platform these days. These can be replayed and they can also live elsewhere in the content ecosystem across a variety of platforms, including on main websites. Remember, in all of these cases, brands have options to include or not include tags, links to products, links to the brand. And usually in these partnerships, there is some type of approval arrangement when it comes to image and text. A fifth way that brands can easily engage with legacy editorial is kind of like an old-fashioned TV way, but I would loosely call it product placement. And as a brand, I would think of this as placement in editorial content that has already been planned. So this is not custom content. You're not getting a special piece of content made for you. So this could either be a visual product placement in a video that was already scheduled to happen so your brand could be in the background or in the foreground, or if you're lucky, could even be used in the process of making the video in the action. Or it could even be a text or photo product placement in an article or a social media post that was already planned. And this could either include or not include a direct link to the product page, depending on the partnership deal. Another popular way for brands to work with editorial is through newsletter sponsorships. And I'm not talking about display ads and newsletters, but I'm talking about inline mentions or custom content created just for newsletters. This could either push to brand sites or back to custom content that you have also bundled into this package that appears on the editorial website or on some other platform. If you think of a newsletter as a standalone editorial platform, you have the opportunity to either partner and sponsor with a publisher only on their newsletter or bundle it into a bigger sponsorship across multiple platforms. There is one kind of brand editorial partnership that I find to be really surprisingly underutilized, even though it's incredibly low lift, but also really effective at reaching and converting audiences and consumers. And that is a custom hub. There are so many websites out there that have branched out beyond their niche to cover everything. Think of all the websites you know that cover everything from home to recipes to fashion to kids to books to entertainment to celebrities. 
everyone seems to be covering everything now. And the truth is, is that your partnership and your editorial placement, even if it's earned media and authentically editorial, may not reach the right eyes. One of the easiest ways to target the audience that your brand wants to target through editorial is to sponsor a hub. Most large, healthy, legacy media brand editorial websites get their traffic in three or four different ways. Usually 30% social media, 30% direct or newsletter, and 30% through search. If there's a publisher that's getting 10 million unique users on their website every single month, how do you guarantee that your brand placement will be in front of the right users? Because those users are looking at a whole bunch of different content. Here's how. Build an editorial partnership and sponsorship around a specific hub. So, for example, say I sell chicken and I want to reach people who are avid buyers of chicken or who have considered buying chicken. I'm not super interested in reaching vegans or vegetarians or people who don't like chicken. The most effective way to reach the chicken aficionado audience is to appear alongside and in editorial content that people will find when they are searching or looking for chicken content. So I would sponsor the chicken recipes hub or the chicken vertical on a recipe website. But this is something that can be applied across the board. If you sell a really niche or specific product and there may not be a ton of content around, I don't know, dental floss, for example, in many cases at many legacy media brands, for a negotiable fee, an editorial website can create a custom hub for you. Now, even if there's not tons of content about dental floss, you could align your floss brand with, say, dental hygiene stories or oral health stories or even toothpaste stories. And just like any other negotiation, coming to the table with sponsorship dollars for a content hub gives you leverage for negotiation for what type of content should be included, what brands could be excluded, maybe your direct competitors, but also adjacent topics that could be included that could fall within the scope of your brand values. And finally, the last idea on my list of how brands can easily engage with editorial beyond traditional earned media is sweepstakes. Now, sometimes sweepstakes are easy to pull off. Sometimes they're really complicated legally to pull off. And this, I find, depends more on how legacy your legacy media brand is. If you're dealing with a massive publishing company with a really complex legal structure and a lot of hierarchy, it may cost a lot of money for your brand to run a sweepstakes with a big hundred year old legacy media company. However, with a lot of pure digital plays, there are a lot more opportunities, especially if you as a brand are willing to take on the legalese and prize fulfillment. Nobody wants to be stuck mailing out 300 nail polishes to winners. Trust me, that's from experience. Sweepstakes are great for editorial because it gives them an easy opportunity to engage with their reader and give the reader a tangible product, which is not something that you always get now in the digital age. And depending on what the expectations are from the brand side, whether the brand expects conversions or signups or acquisition of customer data, all of those things are taken into consideration when deciding whether or not there is a fee or if it's just an exchange. And that's it for this episode of Media Hotline. Remember that all of these ideas are very high level. It's really difficult to offer specific recommendations and advice without having a specific case study. So if you want to work with me, feel free to reach out on my website at danicalow.com. Also, I will answer questions and address case studies for free on this podcast. If you have a question or a case study you would like to submit for consideration for a future episode, please visit danicalow.com and click on Media Hotline. There's a contact form on that page that you can use. And I will try to keep you as anonymous as possible if I use the question on this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe on your preferred podcast platform, and I will see you in the next episode.